welcome to the Zilla Jackson Gaming Channel where we make big plays and do big things whether it's in life or in the video game. So today we're checking out Lil Mambo, but we're not listening to the music video. Patrick CC made a made a YouTube video about him. And we all know that he's one of the, the fake rappers. Yeah. He's one of those fake gangsters, just like 6 9 himself. So let's go ahead and uh, see his thesis and get right into it to see what is, what's he talking about. I still hate that I did not set this up before when I started it, but it is what it is. Making sure everything's straight like I need it to be. All right. who is still in high school while being one of the most talked about upcoming artists today. He is being praised for his genius marketing strategy on TikTok, which has led to him generating millions of streams across all major platforms. Now, drill rap is known to discuss and potentially glamorize the violent nature of growing up in the streets. These artists often rap- Hey, some of the drill rappers be nice. Like Damien, that dude is nice. I mean, I think that drill rap really got popularized when Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke was on the come up before he died, but then like when he died, it just fully took off. <laughs> it just fully took off. After Pop Smoke died and they seen that there's a market for deep voice dudes, deep voice rappers, I should say deep voice rappers that can make the same sound, have the same hard, speaker knock speaker knocking beats just like just like uh we got his name already oh my god how did i draw a blank so fast bro how does that happen uh okay moving on because i'm not finna waste time once they found out that there's a market for speaker knocking, like some of them get the deep voice and sp speaker knockers, bro. The speaker knocker air the weights, bro. Then they, yeah, bro. Yeah. So it's just been a whole lot of basically lookalikes. Like there's one, there's one that sounds exactly like him, bro. But his name is uh Dusty Locane. Dusty Locane sound exactly like Pop Smoke. So let's go. I go with this one. Okay, you hear that? I'm only gonna play that a little bit because if I play any more, then I'm gonna get copyright shacked again. And I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but it, it's one song. Hold on. Uh. You can't tell me that on Christian Dior, Dior, come up in all the stores. Shot, get you packed up, huh? That's on the set. That sounds very much the same, bro. And they have the same style, except for Pop Smoke had thick dreadlocks. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. But then after after the pop smoke died, it's just a market of these motherfuckers, bro. And it's just who can sound the best or who can make the hardest speaker knocking 808 beat sound better. Like while rapping over it. I, I just I don't know. I don't know. 
it about makes their sense. experiences surrounding poverty, drugs, violence, gangs, killings, and worse. Mabu covers these exact themes in his music, only he has never experienced any of that. Mabu is the son of multi-millionaires, attends a very expensive private school, and has never experienced hardship like his drill rap counterparts. However, what makes Mabu so beloved is that he's embracing his privilege and leaning into it for jokes. 50% of the people think it's funny that he pretends to be a gangster, the other 50% think it's corny, but they both stream his music regardless. Although Honestly, I think it's dangerous. I don't know. I heard, I heard a bar in my, like, back in the years when I was just venturing out. I don't know who was by, but I heard a bar. It said, "The most dangerous people are not dangerous people. It's the ones that want to be dangerous people." Bro, if that's not a bar, I don't know what you're listening to. But let me break it down. Motherfuckers like this right here that wants to be in the streets but grew up in the suburbs probably real name is Tyler or or like Matthew Tyler or Matthew or something like that bro I I, I would guess it's probably Matthew because it's Mabu no way Mabu it's probably Matthew okay uh Name is probably Matthew or Makaya, something like that, right? So I don't, I don't understand. What's the, what's the whole hype around being in the streets, bro? Yeah, I think it's dangerous for somebody to be like that, to be from the suburbs and going to the streets, claim you from the streets, claim you did all this other stuff. Someone's gonna run up on you. <laughs> Man, you're not even gonna know what to do. Uh -oh. I don't know. It was like the six nine effect all over again, except for six nine was Mexican. His real name was Daniel. I mean, it just takes it just takes one wrong move for him, bro. Like it just takes him to snitch on the hood that he claimed to be a part of, and then half his fan base is gone. Honestly, better, better invest. You better invest in that money now. Now, shoot. Stop buying all them clocks and rifles and start putting that towards something else. Shoot. Putting that towards a down payment of a house or some car. Not some cars. A good, reliable car. But that's just my point of view. Don't criticize me that hard in the comments. Although Mabu is being considered a marketing genius for these efforts, nothing he is doing here is new. However, his controversial rise does expose the music industry for what it truly is, and some people are not willing to accept it. Typically, when a white rapper gets any type of attention on the internet, they are rejected, labeled corny, or a culture vulture. Mac Miller got this treatment, so did Post Malone. And that's because this stems from a long history of white artists stealing from black artists. Now combine that with a white rapper who is also making music that is inherently violent, adjacent to street life and gang life. One in the head in case my ops dissin. I got goons by my side. Cock one, make the block run. Ops duck. People immediately question the validity of Mabu's claims based on his appearance. We saw the same reaction with drill rapper Max the Demon. Turns out he was actually as real as it gets when it comes to the stuff he raps about. The difference between Max and Mabu is, well, Mabu is kind of exactly who you think he is. Stay hydrated. Now there's. Hey, hold on. It's called Max the Demon. Hopefully, then this shit gets, gets taken down, but. Yeah. Well, it's because I got this tab for another video I'm going to react to right after this video. And in this tab, I'm working on, like, posting another video. All three the videos are coming out back to back periodically. Right, yeah, I got a comment the other day that said I look like a milk dud, and that kind of pissed me off, bro. It, it pissed me, it, well, I'm not going to say it fully pissed me off. It just irked my soul a little bit, just a little bit, because you're probably a grown person 
with the same joke as middle school kids. Um, and I didn't want to address it. I didn't even address the comment on that video either. Now, who was I looking up? Max the Demon. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, let's go ahead and just go with this one. If you want me money, then do your life fix a frame. How I'm living in four borders. Want to news, leave the space on the TV. If you want smoke, just bounce out and come see me. I'm on my point like I'm CP. Talk about scoring, you scoring the D League. That is not nothing to brag about. Because I'm scoring on big homies. Always... Okay, bro, that's kind of nice. But... Hold on. So I woke up my stick on me. 30 I'm 60 stops through the math. Everyone catching two of our mess, bring a whole army. All these shots be head shots like I'm playing black. I'm chopping space. Have them look like a dead zombie. Have them look. Hold on, rewind. Rewind that. I'm adding his songs to my playlist tonight, right after this, but that was actually kind of fire. I mean, he's better than Mabu, bro. Mabu would just be screaming in your ear the whole time. I mean, he's it's still a drill beat. But then it's more of a just a regular rap because I could tell that's his regular voice, bro. That's just his regular voice, bro. He's not screaming or nothing. He's just monotone. He's just regular. He's just rapping, regular rapping. He's just spitting this cadence like this. He's not like, <gasps> he's not like that, bro. But like, uh. To each his own, to each his own. Some rumors circulating that Lil Mabu is the son of a record label executive named Jeffrey Vaughn, which is false. Mabu was labeled an industry plant as soon as he blew up, which is pretty common for most artists that seemingly pop up out of nowhere. However, Mabu's real name is Matthew DeLuca, which can be confirmed with this video. I didn't even know his real name, bro. <laughs> I didn't even know his real name. I just guessed. <laughs> bro, I just guessed. But if it's little something, and then, like, you have to... I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that... About the name that just screamed Matthew, bro. That was hilarious. Video that leaked of him promoting a nonprofit organization in his community. My name is Matthew DeLuca. I go to the collegiate school. I'm in ninth grade. And my favorite thing about Kids Walk for MSK Kids is to getting together with friends and family to support such a wonderful cause. It didn't take long for the internet to discover Matthew's father's name, Peter DeLuca, who is a funeral director and not a music executive. Mm. Peter is based out of Greenwich Village in Manhattan. Mabu has filmed multiple TikToks of his father reacting to his music, which is clearly not Jeffrey and definitely Peter. Now, funeral directors do make a decent amount of money, but nothing that would make them seem filthy rich. However, we did learn that Mabu's father secured a $10 million real estate portfolio after a divorce settlement that occurred in 1998. The New York Post He got the bag. What did she do, cheat? Oh my gosh, now I want, I want to know the details, bro. Like, did she... Okay, so she had to be like a high executive or something, right? She had to be like an executive, someone that has a a high position of power that also gets paid a lot more than the rest of the people that are lower, right? She gotta be like a CEO or like a something like that, bro. She gotta be up there, up there for you to have that much, bro, out of a divorce settlement. First of all, what did she do? She cheated or is it like a, a, a mutual agreement to split up or uh, like, I want to know the details. I really do. Will I look it up? Uh, probably not. I probably will forget right after this video. So let's continue. Let's continue at full screen. It's reported Two. that Mabu lives at his parents' five bed, five bath, 3,327 square foot condo on the Upper East Side, as well as a 6,182 square foot manse in Watermill, 
off of Long Island. Mabu has posted multiple TikToks of him showing strangers his music in the downtown shopping district in Southampton, Long Island, which is quite the opposite neighborhood where Mabu romanticized the idea of him getting shot at. Matthew just graduated from the private collegiate high school for boys in the Upper West Side, which has an annual tuition cost of $55,000 per year. So it's pretty obvious that he comes from a wealthy family and was not raised on the streets. It's safe to assume that Mabu's parents mm -hmm. were likely funding his rap career in the beginning. But that doesn't really explain how he got connected with rappers like PNB Rock, Lil Mosey, Waka Flocka, and others way before anyone else knew about him. And it turns out right. the reason they connected with Mabu was not because they liked his music, but because he was providing marketing services for them. There were some rumors floating around that Mabu was a savvy digital marketer who was able to help increase rappers' numbers on social media and streaming services. Turns out Lil Mabu actually DM'd me three years ago looking to do some business. I own a marketing company and I'm 15. I'd be down to work with you, and I was wondering if I could explain my services and what I can provide. Feel free to contact me. I work with artists like Lil Keed, 42 Doug, Lil Blurry, and other celebrity clients. My team run group chats with- Hey, yo. Uh, didn't we- didn't we react to- No, I don't think I reacted to that video. I think I watched it off, like, without the recording. I think I watched it out of the recording, bro. So it was just, yeah, it was just straight up. So, so it was another, it was another, uh, basically marketing genius people that was doing the same thing, reaching out, telling people, but he was charging outrageous amounts of money, bro. It was outrageous amounts of money. But it wasn't it wasn't Mabu, it was a different it was a different person. If I find a video, I'm not I'm not gonna look it up. To be honest with you, I'm not gonna look it up. I'm already tired as is. I just wanna lay down and listen to music for the rest of the night. It's 922. But uh yeah, that that man. With hundreds of thousands of people email lists, and page promotion with a reach of millions. Through the complex network, our team is able to grow platforms such as Instagram, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube in order to grow your fan base, reach more people, and drastically increase your royalties. We also have direct connects to larger blogs in order to make your Google profile much more established and professional, because ultimately that is what's going to help you get verified. Now, I don't remember seeing this DM, but even if I did, I probably chose to ignore it because it looks like every other generic, hey, we can grow your page. It looks like a scam. Each spam Instagram email that we've all seen a million times. And there is no real way to prove if his methods were legit, but judging by the fact that he was around a few pretty successful artists, as well as him blowing up his own music, is a pretty decent indication that he was legit. But make no mistake, Mabu never wanted to be behind the scenes. He wanted the attention on him. Some of Mabu's earliest songs can be heard still to this day on SoundCloud and Instagram. Hater DM no response to my message. Now I pull up in a foreign and she jealous necklace. I bag the mama go with the four with a fast tag. Can't flip a check and get it back. You know, low mama's going pretty fast. Hate me hitting back, I'm pretty mad. Some next up and a flight stuff. Body dropping in the back. Then a a yeah, yeah. I want y'all to. Um, I didn't word this correctly. I need to put my thinking cap on. No, I'm just playing. I need to think real hard about how I'm going to work this because I really want you guys to reply. So, down in the comments, tell me who would win between Lil Mabu and YNWB Slime. They're about the same age, right? Slime kind of got the nepotism because his brother. But then now that Slime's voice kind of dropped, I think I got I got my money on Slime, bro. I think I got my money on B Slime, bro. Then 14 years old, Mabu was rapping about girls and getting rich. He even went the emo rap route for a little bit.
From here, he experimented with New York Drill nice. with his song Move It. He even paid me to listen to his song when I used to listen to my subscribers' music. I gave him some feedback, and he appreciated it. However, Mabu's youthful voice and heavily off-key crooning wasn't getting the attention he thought he deserved. And when his voice finally dropped, he had unlocked even more potential. The song Demon Time was paired with a music video on the block surrounded by masked up dudes looking menacingly at the camera. Mabu had the imagery down, but his lyrics were tame, not very aggressive, nor believable. Same with his next track, King of the World, where his father drove him to Harlem for a few minutes to film, but his lyrics were mostly just about getting money paired with gunshot sounds as ad-libs. To promote these songs, Wait, he said, I feel like I'm king of the world when I'm up in the mix. Hey, I had that song in my playlist right now, bro. <laughs> I have it on my playlist, bro. Yeah, I'm the king of the world when I'm up in the mix. Isn't that song with Dusty Locaine? I think Dusty Locaine carried it in that one, too. I mean, I didn't even... I didn't hear a little Mabu until... Uh, I'm not to even hear I didn't hear Lil Babu until um, Dante video came on and it showed him. And even then, I was still searching up Dusty Locaine. I thought that was a Dusty Locaine video because I, I heard more Dusty Locaine in the rap, but it is what it is. He mostly used TikTok, constantly using his whiteness as the main marketing tool. He said that he made white people drill music or white boy anthems. You know, it's really difficult when you're doing a school project and the group members don't hold their weight. Like, those are my ops. I snitched to my teacher on them. Mabu was taking the Lil Dicky marketing strategy, making fun of his whiteness so nobody could do it to him. Honestly, this is something a lot of white rappers... I feel like I just got TOS right now. ...rappers do. Shit. Eminem did it in 8 Mile, but Mabu didn't want to be a full-on comedy rapper. He wanted people to take him seriously. He was seen in the studio with K-Flock, one of the most promising upcoming drill rappers from New York. Mabu securing a collab with him would definitely impress people, but the song never was released as Flock got locked up on a federal indictment facing Rico and a murder charge. One week after K-Flock was arrested, Mabu posted a snippet of a song with the rapper D-Thang, who is one of K-Flock's biggest ops. People immediately saw this as weird, working with people's enemies is an easy way to get caught up in Remember when I said that shit was going to be dangerous? That's exactly what I mean, but that shit is going to be dangerous. Doing stupid shit like that. But I made a collab with this one dude. He got locked up over some bullshit, bro. I'm going to make a song with his op, bro. And I'm going to see what that song's gonna be like. Bro. You gonna... Blah, 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 blah. You... Nah, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not I. I'm gonna stick to... Uh, if I do become like a... A rapper... I think I got some bars. I got some bars that I can put up, bro. Would I spit them on stream? No. My my anxiety would not let me rap on stream or on a YouTube video. Uh, at least not yet. <clears throat> at least not yet. Hold on. <clears throat> the heck was that? It would. My anxiety would not let me do that yet. I have to be high or drunk to to do that, and I don't. I don't smoke, and I don't drink. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know, taking the road of getting caught up, bro. That's, that's, that's what it looks like. This is 2021. That's, you're still giving them time to marinate, bro. That's still time to marinate, bro. It's 2023 right now. Bro, they got so much time to marinate. Marinate their feelings about you, bro. If they homie is not, don't come back, bro. Or if he does come back and you still tripping about it, or like they, and they still tripping about it, you probably gonna get caught in the crossfire because of what the fuck happened. But like, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's my thoughts. It's what I believe. Seen it happen to multiple people. But, 
in some trouble, but Mabu claims he was trolling <coughs> D-Thang because he is friends with Flock, because he was constantly posting snippets claiming that D-Thang is trash and ruined the song. Even though Mabu paid D-Thang for the feature long before he ever met K-Flock, and Mabu did eventually end up releasing the song. Either way, both K-Flock and D-Thang were locked up, and Mabu was able to profit from both of them. From there, Mabu linked up with another That's a. That's tough, bro. Both of them? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, that's. That's. That's crazy, bro. They both got locked up, bro. <laughs> that's hilarious, but it's like. That's stupid and hilarious at the same time, bro. Another oh, Bronx Drill rapper, Sha E.K., who is another enemy of K-Flock. Maybe Mabu didn't know, or maybe he didn't care. Then on the track, Everyone K, Mabu dissed one of Sha's op, Use G's, labeling him a rat and threatening him multiple times. Lil Mabu making it out of the suburbs with this one. Bro making it into the hood with this one. It seemed like Mabu was just trying to insert himself into a beef for status because he has no actual ops in the Hamptons. People were confused how he was getting to collaborate with all these artists despite them being enemies. He could have been providing digital marketing services in exchange for a feature, but he was likely just paying them. He has no affiliation to any block or gang, so he could just work with them individually, then safely go back home to the Upper East Side. One thing about rappers is they all have a price. 5k, 10k, 20k would be nothing for Mabu's dad to invest in his son's new hobby. After all, his dad was helping him a lot with his TikTok marketing. While rolling out his song, No Snitching, Mabu's father fake reacted to the song, then dissed 6 9 and said, we making it out with this one. Joking. Say, bro. 6 9 was a bitch for that shit, bro. Hey, hey. If you... I, I say this all the time because I know myself in that situation. I put myself in that situation because I grew up around the hood. I mean, around the hood, not all the way inside the hood, but at least I knew what was going on, bro. I'm not about that life. I can fight and I can play football and I can be a little bit funny sometimes, but I'm not about the... I'm going to go slide on the ops. I'm going to talk shit. I'm going to diss on you and everybody you love. I'm going to kill you and everybody you love. That's not a, That's not my life, bro. That's not. I've always had those people around me. Like, they always wanted me to join their cliques, their gangs, and all that, bro. I was never about that. You see, I'm wearing glasses right now. I'm smart. I'm supposed to be. I was supposed to be in college, but I was disinterested in some of the schools, and it just didn't work out. So... And so therefore, I'm here, but at the same time, that's, that nigga is a, is shitty, bro. That motherfucker is shitty, bro. I mean, I used to be a fan, and then, like, hmm. I don't even know no more, bro. It's a lot of it's a lot of rappers just like that. I can't even listen to Gunna no more, bro. I can't listen to Gunna no more because he's gonna he's gonna preach about the hood. I mean, after snitching like that, you cannot go back to preaching about the hood, bro. You cannot do that. You cannot preach about how you how you gang, you slime, and then how you push and pee, how you how you. How you're in the gang, and then you and your gang go slide on the ops. You can't, you can't do the same thing. You can't make the same music. Which is why I think it's a good investment in six nine. Not talking about. I mean, at least for a little bit, he didn't talk about being in the gang. It was a good two songs. A good two songs before he went back to his old ways and preaching about how he's in a gang 
and stuff, talk about how it gang up and all that, bro. So, yeah, that's a lot, bro. Let's go ahead and finish the video. Talking about making it out of the hood, <laughs> but the thing that really made him go viral was the music video, where he put a red laser beam on a knife while rapping about never snitching. The song stole the late King Von's iconic flow from Took Her to the O. This video got 20 million views on TikTok and was most people's first introduction to the rapper. His follower counts exploded, and now all he had to do was just be consistent. Bruh, ain't never snitch. Let some of our kids put a chop on the blade, but blade on the switch. <laughs> put a chop, put a chopper on the blade, put a blade on the switch, bro. That's funny. That's hilarious to me for some reason, bro. He continued to make fun of himself for attention. Like, what you got on you? Like, oh, he got the now. Delete that. These are the things that push my buttons. Why would you post that with no clarification whatsoever? It was a fake firearm, and now I might have to take legal action. But his next song with rapper Didi Osama was going to shock the internet. Mabu and Didi made a melodic trap ballad that transitions to a gritty drill track midway through. The transition features a dramatization of Lil Mabu getting shot. You can tell Mabu never been in a situation like that, that Mabu says, thank God, that's the plan. Obviously nobody wants to get shot, but critics look at Mabu strange for romanticizing an extremely traumatic and unfortunate reality for a lot of people growing up in the streets. People get shot every day on the streets of New York. Mothers, cousins, sisters, and brothers mourn the loss of their loved ones due to senseless violence. Sometimes they are just going to the corner store for a snack and get hit with a bullet. Then you have a kid from the Upper East Side who drives into Harlem People get shot every day, B. Talk right. <laughs> Talk right, you're gonna be alright. Bruh, man, it's society, bro. Quoted perfectly. Except for without the N word. But yeah, I'm working on I'm working on it. I'm working on myself. So no more no more N word for a little bit. Hopefully, never. But it is what it is. That's a fire ass pick, bro. That's a fire pick. For a few hours, pretends to get shot like it's some fantasy and gets 20 million views while sleeping in his parents' mansion. But when critics speak out, the no response is, You mad he making money? It's a song, bro. Calm down. The reason why Mabu can do this is very simple people don't care. People do not care about a rapper's authenticity. Right. Perfect example. This nigga used to be a, a cop. No, he was a parole officer. He was a parole officer, then he got big and became a rapper. Be anymore. Slim Jesus blew up in 2015 for being a white drill rapper. People thought he was actually a savage that looked like an innocent honor roll student. When Slim openly admitted that he just like actually a savage Wait, hold on, that bro. looked like an innocent in 2015, don't care. People do not care about a rapper's authenticity. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Slim hold Jesus on. blew up in. 2015 for being a is that a little loaded is that nah oh you can't tell me this someone like a little loaded bro a white drill rapper people thought he was actually a savage that looked like an oh. hold on give me a second fifteen for being you cannot tell me that old boy low loaded bro I think that is low loaded, bro. I think that's low loaded, bro. That's hilarious, bro. Everybody thought you was 
Hmm. Nah, I'm like, real rapper. People thought he was Jesus actually savage that looked like an innocent yeah. honor roll student. When Slim openly admitted that he just liked the music and didn't actually live that life, his career was ruined for not being authentic. Four years later, Lil Tecca blew up, rapping about Dude, we used to call him Skittles. We thought he was uh, Eminem's little brother. Having twin Glocks, but openly admitted that he was not about that life. I don't have no straps for nobody. This time, a new generation of music fans emerged, one that just liked the music and did not care about the status. So Tekka thrived and got respect for being honest. Then 6 9 snitched on his entire gang and basically admitted that his whole imagery and lifestyle was all a facade to grow his music. Many people call him- Again, it's a placebo effect, bro. It was the gangsters that actually knew about that life or the gangsters that actually lived that life with the motherfucker sales actually was actually put it on or like was about that life that was listening to his music you know like was consistently a fan of his music and kept on doing it they felt portrayed so they didn't listen to it same thing with me it's a personal choice it doesn't matter if anybody what everybody else thinks because it's only one person's opinion opinion it doesn't matter if it's factual evidence, it's somebody's thoughts. It's an opinion. And because it's an opinion, because it's my opinion, I choose not to listen to him anymore. So, thank you. Call him a genius and don't blame him for pretending. Most recently, Gunna has been labeled a snitch for admitting that his label YSL is a gang, and the internet made it very clear that they do not care if Gunna is a snitch or not. They will be listening to his music regardless. Hell, even rappers themselves don't care. Lil Durk is known for being a 100% authentic street rapper from the trenches of Chicago. Durk has lost blood family members due to street violence. Dozens of his friends died in the streets. And here he is collaborating with Lil Mabu, a rich boy who is pretending and profiting off the struggles that Durk really had to live. If someone like Lil Durk doesn't care, of course rap fans are also not going to care. In fact, many people would call the rapper stupid for being a real gangster. Fetty Wap just got five years for moving drugs all across the country despite being super rich and famous for music. Fans are disappointed in the rapper despite their favorite song from him is literally about selling drugs. But it makes you wonder, why do fans <laughs> need to be entertained by violence and murder? Why does a kid like Lil Mabu have to pretend to be a gangster despite everyone knowing he isn't one to get attention? What does that say about the fans? Gangster rap has been around since the 80s. That they all want attention. That's that's what it says. They're all looking for validation and attention from themselves, so they actually go to the music that they are seeking or the ones that they're trying to become. And they get. Yeah. It's not new. However, these days, most rap music that blows up is very violent. Drill music videos talking about killing ops get the most views on YouTube. The reason why Lil Mabu doesn't make fun frat boy music that is relatable to millions of kids around the world is because he knows that it just won't get any attention. But when you criticize... He didn't want to go the Justin Bieber route. He could've... He could've... Once his, uh, his voice dropped, he probably could've, but... That little kid voice that he had before... <laughs> No, right? That Evo, that Evo one was actually pretty good. Oh, he literally could have went to Kid the Roy route, but he would have came up at the same time as Kid the Roy. Literally, he would have came up at the same time as Kid the Roy if he would have stuck stuck to that type of style. But he could have still been rapping outside of the streets. Kid the Roy gets millions of views, bro, just because he came up with Juice World. Yeah, As Mabu for profiting off the streets, people say, keep that same energy for all the other drill rappers. But here's the difference. Matthew DeLuca can be anything he wants. His parents have deep pockets and he has the best education money can buy in the United States. He is choosing to participate in something that perpetuates violence to marginalized groups of people so he can profit. The reason real drill rappers don't get criticized like this is because these guys have way less opportunities. Most of these guys were literally toddlers when they were exposed to drugs, guns, and violence. It's all they know. 
They can express their pain and struggles, profit from that, and get their family out of poverty. Lomabu literally made a mockery out of this, saying, I took a trip to the hood so I can make it out. He has lyrics making fun of rappers being broke in the hood, which is extremely distasteful considering he has never experienced the pain they have. His most recent song, Mathematical Disrespect, peaked at number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100, an insane feat for an independent artist. But again, if labels are trying to sign him for millions, his daddy already has that, so he doesn't need to take it. So him being an indie artist isn't really much of a flex. Most rappers sign really bad deals because they know they might never get an opportunity to make six figures in their life. They can't afford a fancy lawyer to read the contract, and they get taken advantage of for trusting the label. Also, remember three months ago when John Morant was a guy from the suburbs, got extremely rich, and everyone called him an idiot for pretending to be a gangster? They said John. That shit pissed me the fuck off. I think I talked about it in a video, but that really pissed me off. But I'm glad he's coming back after like 30 some games, so I'm glad he's coming back, bro. <laughs> Speaking of NBA, bro, can't believe. I was talking to another Boston Celtics fan, bro, the, the other day, literally, literally yesterday, I was talking to him, and, no, I was talking to him, I was talking to him on Wednesday, on Wednesday, I was talking to another Boston Celtics fan, and I was on my way to take my little cousin to a track meet, and I was talking, and then we were the subject of trading Who's going to get traded? And then I said, I honestly would trade Marcus Smart, sadly, because you just don't have that good of a ball handler, primary ball handler. I mean, yeah, you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, but then they're... And then I wake up the next morning. I go, like, the rest of the day goes on. And then the next morning, you see... Marcus Smart traded. I was like, oh my god. It kind of felt weird. It, it felt weird because I predicted it. It felt weird because I predicted it, bro. Make it seem like I'm a wizard. <laughs> I was throwing his life away by pretending to be something he's not. Why is Lil Mabu being considered a genius for doing the exact same thing that John ja Morant was doing? Mabu's story has two outcomes. He will continue to push this gangster persona until he actually gets into a dangerous situation, chain snatched, jumped, robbed, hopefully not worse. Or one day he will realize this gimmick is drying up, he can't profit off being a fake gangster anymore, and he will transition to pop music and be accepted with open arms by the music industry. And if his music career fails, and we all forget about him, That's he true. still has extremely rich parents who will be able to fund whatever his next dream is. That is true. How oh, ironic. I'm not to video. Shut up. Alright. Well, that was very interesting, to say the least. Um... Yeah, make sure you comment all that good stuff. Let me let me know what y'all think about the intro. I do have a, two more videos that's gonna be out, which is gonna be a lot of editing. Luckily, I didn't record that long of a video last time, or well, the other video that was already about to be posted. But this video is almost fifty minutes long, and then I had to edit this video. Well, all right, it's been your boy Zilla Jackson. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Stay safe. It's almost 4th of July. Have fun. Don't get too drunk. Make sure you're not drinking driving. I don't know when I will see y'all again. So, please, be careful. Catch you guys later. Peace.